We live in a changing world. As much as we think the world is changing about, we must also understand that we are the ones contributing to that change. Welcome to another episode of Change. Our lives have changed. Thanks to science and technology, we have now the modes of transport, the modes of communication. As much as it has modernized our lifestyle, it has brought its own harms with it. Quite late we have understood what are the impacts of these lifestyle changes. And now to undo these changes, we have to bring about a change in ourselves again. At this juncture, let us understand what are the changes that we have undergone and what changes that we must, we must make to bring about this lifestyle change. Today in the studio with us, we have Rajyogini from Hakumari sister Usha to shed light on these changes. Didi, welcome to the show. Thank you. When we look about lifestyle, it comes with two words today, life and style. style. Earlier, life was something that everybody was concerned, but today style has added on to it because mm. we think that we are a modern generation. Yeah. So as much as we are living life, we are living it with a style. Mm. And with this style, we have developed some complications. Too. Definitely. So, life was simple before, but now as it has become lifestyle, mm, let's say it has brought in some undesired effects to it as well. In, in a very common statement, if I would want to make it, the modes of communication have increased. There was a time once that to speak to someone um, who would live in a different city, people would have to wait for hours together for the operator to connect to them. Yeah, and going then to the post make, office and yeah. getting the line through and... It was it was a strange world. Yeah. But today if we'd look, we would think that, wow, did that happen really that way before? Did people have to wait? It almost sounds unrealistic. And people had time yeah. and they were happy to wait for that. Wait for that. Everybody is busy in their own world and they don't have time for others. Mm. So, such is the lifestyle now. Before, sometimes some people tell me also that before when we just had the landline, we were quite happy in the family. But now that because everyone has a mobile in their hands, every time there is, we try to talk to our family members and that is the time when he has, wait a minute, I have a call. And he would go out, he would, he would be such that he would not try to speak in front of the family members. He would, wait a minute, let me just answer this call. Go out and answer the call. There is a sense of privacy which privacy, has, yeah. which has um, I think, taken away the sense of family. Yeah. Being in the family, if I'm not able to open myself in front of others, Maybe there is no, no sp special talk also, but still people feel, no, it's my private call. And that's when they go out and answer the call. So that's when people feel, they start assuming whose call may be. Maybe someone very close, maybe he has some affairs, maybe some argument that he does not want to talk in front of all of us. So such assumptions are being created. As much as we would believe that the world has become a global village, but it has become a village where one person does not know another. Another, yeah. They are alone. So when we would travel, there would be a certain amount of physical activity that would come. But today, that fun has, has gone. Yes. So, uh, one of my friends the other day, we were talking about it and she said that I would rather take a train to Kolkata and spend 20 hours in the train than taking a flight where I would just land in Calcutta in two hours. Hmm. And I said, why would you want to spend 20 hours in the train? And she surprisingly said that I would want to enjoy the journey. Yes, because so that they can see the people, they can see the world around them. In the flight, they cannot see anything. So they come to they don't come to know what is going on in the world. And in the train journey, 
we see so many things. The reason why I wanted to bring up this is because I would use the next term, which is the fast-paced life. Life, yeah. Our life has become fast. Yeah, everybody's running, running, running. And everything that we do, everything that we want, we want it fast. Food has become fast food. Yes, fast food. <laughs> the internet is high-speed internet access. Yes. High-speed transport. Everything that we need is high-speed today. Mm -hmm. But you might be surprised that why must I ask this question, but this is a question that I'm waiting to ask for a long time to someone, is why are we wanting this fast thing? What is the hurry? Where do we want to get to? After running, 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 there is no destination. So, it is better we enjoy the side scenes also and move. I believe that not just the side scenes, but together with that, we should have an aim in life. Where I want to go? What I want to do? What is the purpose of my being in this world? When I'm clear about that roadmap, that what is the purpose of my being in this world, then maybe I can enjoy my life in a better way. Instead of just running without an aim, without a purpose, today this is what is happening. People have no purpose in their life and they are running. So finally, they can't, they can't enjoy their happiness in their life. And life is meant for being happy. We are all human beings and beings means we are happy beings. So let us enjoy our life with happiness. But in all this fast pace, we are losing the happiness from our life. Mm. Recently, you might have also read that in the happiness index, which was done by UN of all the countries, and India's number was 122nd. Once upon a time, where people used to come to India even to take photographs of poor people with happy faces. And they used to wonder, where do they get the happiness from? They don't have anything, but still they are happy. The smile is on their face. And today, our neighboring countries in happiness index is ahead of us. Yes. And we are 122nd. So that shows that the happiness is like going away from our lives. Because maybe the lifestyle that we have adopted is such which has no happiness. Mm. No doubt we have become a developing country and we have developed so much, but yes. we have lost something in this race yes. for development. Yes. That serenity, that tranquility, that calmness, that coolness in everybody's nature, Everything is gone now. Yeah. So that means we are cut from our spiritual roots. That is why. So we need to come back to our spiritual roots so that if we bring this in our lifestyle, maybe our lifestyle will become something more. Technology or science is nothing bad. But if I am able to connect myself to that spiritual roots and bring that into my lifestyle, maybe I can use this technology in a better way, still being in that serenity, in that tranquility within myself. And at the same time, we can do everything on time. Mm. Somebody very beautifully said that science is a good slave and a bad master. Yes. And today we we tend to become slaves of science and technology, the things um, mm. that that are available today with us. We become slaves of bad master. <laughs> so what? where are we going to we take going to our enough? lives to? Okay. On the last aspect of the lifestyle that we have changed today is today medical science has also grown, grown much, much more ahead of the times that we would live in. Today we have better supplements, nutritional supplements, we have vitamin tablets, we have what not, we have advanced surgeries. But even with the advancement of medical science, we have lost health yes. to a greater deal. 
lifestyle diseases are something which are posing risk to the world population today. Heart disease, diabetes, hypertension, these are the things which are the major killers along with depression. Yeah. So these are things that are not caused by the lack of nutrition. Mm. But with these things also, the world is dealing with such a big menace of these health issues. Mm -hmm. And as much as I say, the means of health have increased, the health itself has gone. Because somewhere I read very beautifully or somebody shared with me that uh, uh, mostly the disease, the, the cause of the disease is not just the supplements or the food or what we take, but it depends upon our nature. And they are now doing a research on, say, jealousy. Which organ is affected because of jealousy? Anger. Which, uh, which organ is affected because of anger? And they, they told me that cancer is because when a person tries to suppress the anger or maybe he is in such a place where he wants to bring out that anger but he cannot. So he is suppressing that anger and that anger so much to it but he cannot bring out. So internally he is harming his own body. body. And that is where the tissues or the cells, they get into a, like clinch. And then that it is where the disease. Uh, disease, yeah. Mm. So nature cure means I need to bring about a change in my nature. This is where the spiritual dimension comes in our life. Because that's the only dimension which helps me to bring a total nature cure, not just the physical nature cure, but my nature inside, I'm trying to heal. Meditation, this is where it becomes, comes in our life. And that's why everybody is advising for meditation, go for meditation, any type of meditation, whichever suits you. Because meditation is the only way that I can heal myself from within. Mm. When you talked about meditation, I, I recollect. Medically speaking, people said that lifestyle changes are the biggest contributors for diseases in the coming times. And um, one of the WHO reports said that by 2020, more than 70% of the diseases that we would encounter would be because of the lifestyle changes. Yes. And... Because it has come from lifestyle changes, because now um, we work in corporates, most of the work is done sitting, everybody's working on computers, there's yeah. not enough exercise, uh, there's high level of nutrition and uh, I think genetically modified food that also goes into our systems. And since all of this has happened so quickly, if we have to deal with it, we have to bring about a change in our lifestyle again. Mm. So to bring good health back to us, we have to bring about a lifestyle and many doctors advise that the causes for diabetes, hypertension, heart disease is, is not just because of the physical things that you are doing. It's also because of the emotional things that you have. It's about the emotional blockages. Yes. Since there is broken up families, now nobody lives in bigger families. The families have come down. Nucleus, yeah. Nuclear families. So there is no emotional support. There is no physical advice on what to eat, what not to eat. And if people want to bring about change, doctors are very openly advising patients that exercise, food habits and meditation. Meditation, the three-dimensional health care. So meditation is the only way I can heal myself from within. Then only I'm able to bring that change again in my lifestyle, which I've moved away from. I need to go back to that space. And that's where I can heal myself. As much as it is clinically documented that meditation helps in doing these things, and that's the reason doctors are advising, and you say that meditation is the way that it could cure. I wonder, with the modern pace of things, I don't think so that wherever we are going in the future, things are going to slow down. The, in the fast-paced life, things are going to be much more faster. How do we 
bring in meditation to our fast paced lifestyle yes the life has become very fast but this is where i need to really calm down somewhere inside because if i am able to calm down from inside then only whatever i am running for i am able to achieve that and that is the inner sense of satisfaction otherwise i may be having all materialistic prosperities but because there is no calmness within i am not healthy in- internally i am not happy internally no satisfaction of life so that is why in this fast world where people don't have time but really they need to bring out time just as in the world when a person has a heart attack and he goes up to the doctor and says well i need to get healthy again i have so much of work pending and the doctor would say look if you want to get healthy three things proper nourishment rest and exercise and if the person says look my life is so busy nourishment okay i'll take care of that rest also i will take care but exercise i think i won't find half an hour brisk walking morning brisk walking in the evening because all my work starts from the morning itself how can i take out this half an hour what will the doctor say you would say if you want to live you would have to do this <laughs> if you i i the better die mm. because you need to find time for exercise mm. and because of this health awareness people are trying to find time walking find find so many people walking in the morning in parks all full with people walking jogging all that because now the awareness is there mm. so similarly for this also we need to develop that awareness that if i really want to live a quality life not just a healthy life but a quality life i need to find time for meditation as well mm. one of the things that i recollect just now is about people trying to slim down their body weights but still carrying the weight of their ego yeah and their bad behavior or whatever those yes. other things are so that is helping them to bring back their bodies to normal shapes but that does not restore the peace of mind yes it does not restore the peace of mind and this is what is needed in the present time so that's why i said if they want to really bring quality in their life in their relationships in their lifestyle then this awareness is very necessary that we need to find some time for meditation also just as we find time for exercise i need to find time for meditation also recently i was reading a book where it is said that patanjali has mentioned 84 types of meditation mm. and any type of meditation that suits you you can do that meditation mm. dhyanam and maybe in today's world there are self created meditation techniques also mm. which may be more than the 84 so many types of meditation and in some types of meditation maybe people are not benefiting themselves to the extent they have to but because they don't know the real technique they do that meditation mm. there's no other option for them but nowadays on the internet definitely there are various types of meditation so in that also people get confused which type of meditation should i adopt for myself True. many times people come up to me which is the accurate meditation technique that i should adopt and i tell them don't try to mix all the meditations some people feel okay i take something from this one something, something from, from this one, one something from the i said this won't work because it is going to create a lot of confusion inside and sometimes you might feel i think i'm not benefiting in any way so you're just wasting your time adopt one type practice that for some time see whether that suits you or not otherwise try another one then to begin with we need to have such of inputs of positive thoughts so that i can contemplate 
if I do not have that much of inputs of thoughts, positive thoughts, I cannot contemplate or maybe I start with positive thinking, then land up somewhere in negative. So, if the, the mind is too much habituated into negative thinking, so starting with positive thinking, then we do not know where we vary away and reach that point and then we think, I do not know how I reached here. Mm. So, similarly, so that much of inputs I need to have to think positive, to contemplate for self-contemplation and then communication with the self, with others and with the Supreme. And for that, the being part is really going to help me if I can really be with my own self. That is where I am honest with my own self, with the others also and with the Supreme Source where I focus my attention. Mm. And the third is concentration. So, when I am able to develop that focus, I can concentrate and that is which will take me to that state of realization, is not it? So, these are the four steps of meditation. So, we need to go step by step, practice in such a way that we move step by step, that is when we are going to really achieve that state. Then wherever I am, even in that fast moving bullet train maybe, but still I can stay in that state of realization or sure. take my mind into that blissful ecstasy and enjoy meditation. As you speak about it, it, it appears that it is not so difficult. Yeah. It is possible and it just, it just requires some time and attention from us and I think with today's episode, our, our friends who are watching this, they would realize that yes, they can bring about this change in their lives. Yes, definitely. Thank you, Didi. Thank you for sharing your insights today. Change is not very difficult. As much as we are agents of change, we are parties to it. We can bring about change if we want to. If we want to be part of it, either we take steps and we contribute to it, or else we could just be a party and observe how things happen. It is a choice that we have to make. Let's change something. Let's bring about something positive and let's change our lifestyle. That's all in change today. See you again. Take care.